These days, most video games are considered a success based on how well they sell. The more units you ship out, the better a game is considered by the general public. Except that isn't always the case, because some of these super rare video games are worth insane amounts of money. Well, that's if you can find a copy. Hey guys, Arcade Cloud here, and today we're counting down our list of the top 5 rarest video games in the world. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with some friends. It's free. Number 5. Nintendo World Championships for the NES There's a pretty interesting story behind the Nintendo World Championships game and why it's so rare. The original NWC happened in 1990, starting in Texas and touring its way through 29 city championships across the entire United States. Players were separated into different age groups and competed on the NES game that was literally named after the event. The cartridge had a combination of three games on it, Super Mario Bros., Rad Racer, and Tetris. And players would go head to head to see who could get the top scores and time. These days, when you compete at the top level of video games, you expect to walk away with some pretty big money prizes, but Nintendo didn't disappoint back in the 90s either. The top winner from each age group in the tournament walked away with the tournament with a $10,000 US savings bond, a brand new 1990 Geo Metro convertible car, a 40-inch rear projection television, and to top it all off, a gold-painted Mario trophy. That's a lot of prizes. But of course, I haven't even started to talk about the game itself yet. 90 copies of the original cartridge exist, which makes it pretty rare. All of these cartridges were given out to competitors of the tournament whether they won or lost. But that's not actually the entry for this list. Now, don't worry, I haven't just talked about a video game tournament for no reason, uh, because all of that was really relevant. Because the actual entry for this list is the Nintendo World Championship Gold Cartridge. The Gold Cartridge is even more rare than its gray counterpart, with only 26 copies of it being given out. These cartridges were given out as prizes in a separate but related contest held by the Nintendo Power Magazine. It had all of the same games as the original gray version, the only difference is the color. But, I mean, come on, that shiny gold surface is obviously so much cooler than the dull gray of a standard NES card. Collectors seem to think so too, because the last time one went on sale, it was bought for more than $15,000. Number 4. Superman for the Atari 2600 Released in 1979 and published by Atari, Superman was an action-adventure game and one of the earliest licensed video games in history. As you would expect in a game called Superman, you take control of the titular character, saving the world from Lex Luthor and his evil henchmen before getting Superman back to the Daily Planet. Here he can turn back into the mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent and go about his alter ego's life. Though Superman has a whole bunch of interesting powers like laser vision, frost breath, and super speed, you only ever use strength, x-ray vision, and flight in this video game. The game could actually be played by two players at once for an interesting co-op experience. Players would use the left joystick controller to move Superman left and right, while the other player would use the right controller to move him up and down. That seems pretty experimental to be honest. <laughs> I don't know if I would enjoy that. The game was received very well by reviewers, with some saying it would be the beginning of an exciting new era for home arcades. So how could such a supposedly incredible and popular game go on to become one of the rarest around? Well, in a similar sense to the Nintendo World Championships cartridge, there were three versions of this game released. One with a text-only label, one with red text on the label, and then the rare version, the one with yellow text on the label, as well as a picture of Superman. A boxed copy of this game sold on eBay for over $10,000 back in November of 2012, so it's pretty obvious that it's a rarity by that price. Although that one did come with the box as well as the game, which made that particular version even rarer. Usually you'd be looking at around $3,000 if you marketed it well. Number 3. Blockbuster World Championships 2 for the Sega Genesis The Nintendo World Championships weren't the only video game tournaments going on in the 90s. We also had the Blockbuster World Video Game Championships, which was held in branches of the popular Blockbuster video rental store all across America. Now I know that a lot of you might not actually know what Blockbuster is. God, am I that old? Oh my god. Well, Blockbuster doesn't actually exist anymore, you know, because Netflix kind of killed it. Before Netflix and all the other video streaming sites became so popular, people still used DVDs, imagine that, and before that, even VHS tapes and Betamax. Laserdisc too, if you want to be a nerd. They allowed you to rent out movies and later on video games before they became available for purchase. They were very popular until the streaming industry and other forms of entertainment like YouTube came along and destroyed their source of revenue. Sorry, Blockbuster. Anyway, back to the game. Blockbuster was running a world video game championship in 1990. Contestants were split between those aged under 13 and those aged over 14, and they could pick between Sega's Mega Drive or Nintendo's SNES. Every store in North America ran the event, and the winners became store champions, and then progressed further to the finals at GamePro's headquarters in San Francisco. Both versions of the game, the SNES cartridge and the Mega Drive cartridge, are very rare. But it's the Mega Drive cartridge that I want to focus on because it's even more rare. This is because the SNES version of the game could be won by contestants, but the Sega version was actually ordered to be destroyed after the 
the tournaments. It was a bit of a bad move from Sega, and I guess that a lot of the workers realized that too, because some of the workers kept hold of the game. It's super rare, but sometimes you might see it sold on eBay or in an auction for over $2,000. Number two, Birthday Mania for the Atari 2600. If you want a seriously rare game, then you have to go no further than the Atari 2600 game Birthday Mania. This game is basically considered the holy grail of all Atari 2600 games ever released, and if you were to find it, you would probably have collectors climbing over each other trying to buy it from you. Only 10 copies of Birthday Mania were officially released, and then a few extras were given out to a couple of helpers, though no one knows who these helpers are or what they actually did to help with the game. Nowadays, Anthony Tokar, the man who developed Birthday Mania, is in his 70s and is unfortunately experiencing health issues. He supposedly made the game because he has a long-standing love for Atari and wanted to make his very own video game as sort of a love letter to the console. He discovered a book on how to program the 6502 microprocessor chip, but he no longer remembers exactly what he used from that book, though it took him several months to make the game. It's rare for older games to not show up on ROM downloader websites, but Birthday Mania is one of the games that fits that category. For those of you who don't know, a game ROM is basically just the files of the game stored on a read-only memory drive, usually the cartridges that you put into the older consoles. A lot of the times, the data from these games is ripped from the ROM and uploaded on websites so people can download them and play them on PC emulators. Well, with Birthday Mania, no one ever uploaded the ROM online, meaning only the few people who actually have the game are able to play it. I guess you're not missing too much. From rare bits of gameplay uploaded to YouTube, we can see that the game is pretty classic for the Atari 2600, meaning it's actually pretty simple. Now, that's not a bad thing. The game looks charming in its own way. It looks like you basically play as a guy in a birthday hat as a bunch of candles fall towards him. According to pictures of the manual, this guy is actually called Mr. N. Irvis, like nervous. The point of the game is to blow the candles out before they hit the ground. He starts off with 50 pounds of air in his chest, and you lose a pound every time a candle slams into the ground. A pretty weird game, and one of the rarest in history. Number one, Gamma Attack for the 2600. Sometimes video games become so rare and so sought after that people begin to think that copies of them don't even exist. One of those games is the Atari 2600 Legend Gamma Attack. This game is arguably the rarest video game in existence, with supposedly only one cartridge ever being produced by the company Gamation. It's currently owned by a man named Anthony DiNardo, and he once tried to sell the game on eBay for $500,000, easily making it one of the most expensive video games in history as well. Published in 1983 by the company Gamation, Gamma Attack is a game where you attack tanks on the ground with a flying saucer, which is basically the complete opposite of what classic video games are usually like. I mean, usually you're in the tank firing up at the flying saucers. You can move your saucer left and right as well as up and down, but it strangely only shoots at a 45 degree angle downwards and to the left. With a lot of Atari games, because of the technical limitations presented by the console, the stories had to be explained in the manuals of the book. The story actually sounded pretty interesting, and the manual said the following. You are the commander of the only gamma field in this stellar field. The vegan war fleet has taken control of your gamma outpost planet and is defending it with vegan laser pulse tanks. This planet is the only habitable planet in this star system, and you must stay out there and fight the vegans as long as you can. You move your ship across the surface of the planet and destroy vegan tanks that you encounter. Destroying all tanks advances the player to the next level. Each laser pulse that your gamma ship receives reduces your hovering altitude. When your ship crashes, the gamma appears and your game is over. Why are they called vegans? Are they, are they like actually vegans or is that like the name of the aliens? I I don't understand! You would think that such a rare game would be subject to the same issue as Birthday Mania, that the game would be unplayable because the ROM hadn't been dumped online. Well, that's where you would be wrong. After the game was discovered in the possession of Anthony DiNardo, the conversation turned to preservation for the community by dumping the ROM online. Eventually, that dream was realized, and the ROM of Gamma Attack was released online for PC emulators. And there you have it, our list of the top five rarest video games in the world. Do you agree? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos from Arcade Cloud on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Take care and game on.